Hey everyone, welcome to the Acrobatic Arts Podcast. I'm Loren, and I will be interviewing some of the top leaders and innovators from the dance and acrobatic industry. If you are a teacher, performer, student, or a lifelong learner like myself, you are sure to find these episodes intriguing and full of inspiration. Acrobatic Arts is passionate about providing current and relevant information for everyone. So please, sit back and enjoy as we share our passion with you and the world. Today's episode is all about mats. Master teacher Sarah Reese provides an overview of the different kinds of mats that you might want to consider for your acro dance training program. Take it away, Sarah. Hi friends, I'm very excited to be here today. We are going to talk about mats and equipment. I want to just start off first by saying you really don't need any equipment for a successful program and you really don't need equipment for your dancers to excel. So if you have some strip mats, maybe some yoga blocks and some other little trinkets, you're already doing awesome, okay? Step one is those strip mats. I personally like having one of each because they both have benefits. That's the carpet mat and the strip mat. I love having one of each as opposed to having the same. All sorts of different types of mats that you can start to incorporate into your programs. Again, you don't need any of these things. However, as you start building your programs and seeing that they're getting traction and you want to expand, these are the kinds of things that you could start adding and as your programs grow. While I was sort of building acro programs at various studios, I started to notice that there was a need for these programs that existed somewhere between dance and gymnastics. So the acro dance programs, but when I was surveying clients, what I found was they what they loved about dance was the year end recital and the super cute. Um, sparkly costume that they got to wear and they loved that they got to do things to music that's not a big part of gymnastics they do use music and gymnastics but it's not the same as we kind of use music and dance and kids love that that environment where they're going to get to wear that sparkly costume they're going to get to go on stage and do a recital they're going to get to listen to awesome music but then blending that with some of the awesome things that gymnastics has to offer, which is, you know, the, the tumbling on some of those cool apparatuses and, you know, they get to flip around and hang from things. So I found that blending what both the best things of those kind of programs had really gave me a lot of success um, and a lot of traction. And there was um, an increase in numbers of participants as I started to add new kind of gymnastics inspired apparatus. So we're not running gymnastics programs and you know those are vault bars, beam floor. We're obviously not running and doing vaulting. But when I start to add some of these mats that are kind of more gymnastics based, you start to get a little bit more of a gymnastics feel. But for me, that was a really great thing because I was bridging that gap between the gymnastics programs and the dance programs. We were truly running an acro dance program. We were doing a, a recital with the costumes, um, but then we were also adding those elements of, um, we'll call them sort of introductory gymnastics elements with these fun pieces of equipment. And it was really great in terms of um, building programs and also having them for my higher level athletes really helped advance their skills, tumbling, that kinds of things. My three favorite things to buy once you have your strip mats and your yoga blocks. So my three favorite things are a cheese mat, which is a a wedge mat, a crash mat, and I prefer the ones that you can fold up and a block, which is just like a padded block. And then I'll also quickly talk about what a trapezoid is what you can do on those awesome folding beams, which I love, which are quite cheap and um, a great thing to add to your program. And then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the air track because I know everyone loves the air track and has questions about that. Yeah, again, you don't need any of these things, but here's what you can start to think about adding. When we teach the acrobatic arts courses, we often get a lot of questions about the row mats. And one of the common questions that comes up is which mats are better? The velcro together strip mats or the carpet rollout mats and my answer to that question is if you have the opportunity to get both because both have their benefits the folding mats are easier to clean if you have younger students that might have a potty issue or if you're trying to keep things sanitized due to sweat and germs 
and they're great to fold up and use for drills. So you can stack them for your bridge kickover, you can do stretch jumps onto your back to prepare for things like back tuck, you can use them as a stack to cartwheel over, you can turn them long to help your round offs, you can do power hurdles off them. There's so many different things that you can do with your stacked folding mat. So those are obviously a very great thing to have. The carpet I also really like because the carpet has less chance of rolling. It tends to be heavier and it sticks to the ground uh, better because it's just more of a, a weighted down thing since it's one long surface. So what I also love about the carpeted mats is that any mat that I get that I want to add on top of that usually has a velcro on surface. So if I'm doing any drills I can then velcro my mat on top of my carpet surface and it's not going to slide and it's not going to move. In addition to that if you're training more serious athletes as they go on to train in uh, circ environments or if they're in gymnastics environments a lot of these facilities have that carpeted type flooring and it's very common for them to have to learn how to be comfortable on that carpet flooring they're going to find it in their training facilities as they go on so it's not a bad idea for you to have it so it's something that they're familiar with and again because it's one longer strip it doesn't slide as much that does does, however mean that it's usually harder to store because it's harder to move and it doesn't come apart. The other concern I have found with my carpet roll-up mats over the years is they do tend to carry uh, an odor. I have cleaned them no matter how many times you know I go and get a professional um, carpet cleaner and get them done. They do kind of retain a little bit of a foot sweat odor. Um, that is the downside of the carpet ones, whereas the vinyl mats tend to clean nicer. But again, there's benefits and not so great things about both. If you have the opportunity, I would encourage you to get both and that's going to be really helpful for your programs. Once you have secured your primary mats, the next three things that I suggest you invest in are a cheese mat, uh, a block wedge and a crash mat. So cheese mats come in a variety of sizes. It's going to be important that you pick one based on the size of the athletes that you're training. So if you just go ahead and get the cheap one, it may only be for toddlers or young children and your teenagers might not get much use for it because it might slide around or simply just be too small for them. They do come uh, quite expensive. The larger the size, the more expensive it gets. They can range anywhere from $250 up to um, I've seen them as much as $1,200 when you're increasing the size. So keep that in mind. There's lots of great things that you can do on a cheese mat. The primary thing that they're going to help with is all of your rolls. So your forward rolls, your backwards rolls, your straddle rolls, all of those rolling techniques, log rolls, that is the number one thing that you're going to get out of your cheese mat. Some cheese mats are one piece and other cheese mats fold in half. When those cheese mats fold in half, they double up as a spotting block. So then you can stand on top of it and help spot some of your lifts from a higher height, which is great. You also now have the option of stacking those panel mats on top of those blocks for some of your tumbling drills. So having a block is a very great thing. Um, it's awesome for strength. It's awesome to have dancers do bridges up on that so that they can start to uh, work on their alignment and develop their strength by having their feet up quite high. It also stores nicer if you have the one that collapses down and folds down. Your block is absolutely everything when it comes to training your tumbling. So you've probably already learned this in the pre-cartwheel when we do that cartwheel over sort of a small booster block or an aerobic step. It will help with the hand, hand, foot, foot coordination. Your younger athletes coming in really struggle with the distance from the standing to the floor when they're attempting to cartwheel. So by adding a block there, you decrease the distance and they gain more confidence. This goes on um, as well for handstands, that distance to the floor becomes too far. So with your younger athletes, you can be doing your L handstands on that propped up surface until they have the coordination to be getting their hands all the way down to the ground. That block will then carry on with you for a very long time. It's going to force those cartwheels to go up and over. So a lot of the dancers have a hard time getting their hips stacked over their shoulders. That will carry on into their side aerials eventually and it goes on and on in terms of tracking. So that block, once they have that pre-cartwheel, don't get rid of that block. Get them still cartwheeling up and over that block. Get them doing their round offs over that block get them doing um, their flying cartwheels over the block 
and help them really work on pushing that back leg really hard, um, which you're going to get a lot of use out of that block um, when you're doing drills like that. It's also great for things like developing your kickover, and it's really amazing for developing your round offs when you turn it the long distance because it will help your dancers really reach out into that round off that we're looking for. Uh, your crash mat. Your crash mat is awesome because it's a confidence booster. So the main things that you're going to work on your crash are your handstand tip to forward rolls. That is a big one that we see in the exams that people struggle with. You know, they say it hurts if they're not hollowing out through their candle and landing properly. So you are going to take that crash mat and then you can train that handstand forward roll on the crash and just have that little bit of cushion. It's also going to be awesome for things like getting the mental preparation for your back handsprings so that we're not just learning those on a hard floor. The dancers can get more confident as they're doing back handsprings on a crash. When you pick a crash, pick one that's a little bit more hard as opposed to the ones that are super soft. It's going to be nicer on their wrists. Um, I like to do a lot of drills like handstand fall flats on crash. That is how I'm going to check their body alignment and posture so that I know if they're ready for back handsprings and that will also help me clean up their handstand forward rolls. Particularly if they cannot hit that hollow position, then you want to make sure that they have the motor control to do handstand fall flat first. So that is why I love my crash. It's really great for all of my body shaping type activities. Also, it's really great for tricks. So things like your flip to sit, um, any kind of those, you know, rolling tinsica things where you might land in a compromised way if it's a, you know, variations, um, all of those types of um, cool floor work. There's a lot of things that um, people want to try, but doing it on a soft mat is going to make that experience more pleasant as they're learning it. So I highly uh, encourage you to get a crash mat. You can get them as cheap as $500 off of Amazon these days, and they will often fold in half for storage, which then gives you options as well for doing things like back truck drills or, or stacking your stacked mats on top of them. Those are the three things, the cheese, the crash, and the block. And then once you've got those three things in your facility, um, I have the two bonus mat options, which I will include a padded beam. And what I love about the padded beam is it will single-handedly solve a lot of your cartwheel problems in a fun way. So if you want to set up a station where you're spotting some of your athletes and you, you're not able to be super hands-on with the other athletes, you can set up that mat and set up that beam and make it a game for them to land on the beam and keep their hips square and land properly. It will keep them very entertained and it will straighten up those cartwheels. So when you have the dancers that are flying sideways in their aerial and you go back to their alignment in the cartwheel, you often see that it's not straight and it's not going up overhead like through a tunnel. The dancers love the beam and it's a fun um, thing to do and they come quite cheap. So you could add that to your tickle trunk and it will help clean up a lot of those side aerials and those cartwheels. Um, I will also add a trapezoid to your tickle trunk. That is a more expensive, they usually come in about $1,200 for a trapezoid. They are basically uh, building blocks that are, have Velcro that snap together and you can configure them into any shape that you may like. A very useful thing because you can then build it from the lower level up and you can use it for you know spotting lifts for um, training round offs off the edge to help get the, the snap down and the chest up you can do your round offs over you can do your bridges on them you can do your kickovers again a little bit pricey but uh, well worth the investment because of the versatility and what you can do with them because you can take them apart and build them to the shapes that you would like and then lastly to that, I will add the ever common air track. So everyone loves the air track. I want to talk about the air track in terms of actually being a training aid. The air track is going to get students into your class because it's fun. They're going to get their area a little bit faster because it's a little bit easier. Happy students having fun equals happy classes, people registering for classes and helping retention and everyone's having a good time. So that is a positive thing. Do we necessarily need the air track in terms of a training aid to actually further progress our uh, technical um, advancement? Probably not, because when they're doing the aerial on the floor, they're definitely not on an air track. Does it maybe help their um, mental confidence? It's possible, yes. Um, but the main thing here is that it's fun. 
So if they're having fun, I think that that's great. And I think that that's something you should look at adding to your classes because really that's really what it's all about. But I would caution spending too much time on your air track, particularly if you're doing any backwards tumbling. So like round off back handspring and standing back handspring, the longer you spend on those devices, the more of a dependency that your athletes will have. And that will actually work against you if you're trying to get them to tumble on a hard surface. So you can use it as, um, you know, an, 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 elementary teaching aid for those side aerials and for those back handsprings but to try not to keep them on there that long because that will eventually work against them so the air tracks are fun they are getting more and more better in quality I've had some for you know over a decade now with no problems so you can get them for about $500 now these days and they are pretty pretty solid, but definitely do your research. There are um, North American suppliers and UK suppliers if you're um, interested in going that route, but um, I have seen great success for the ones that are coming in at uh, much cheaper prices. And then again, check out Amazon, check out Ikea, check out um, the dollar store for um, things that you can add to your classes that are bright and colorful and tactile and have texture. So those are my suggestions for you in your programs and I hope you have a great time. Again, a cheese mat is something you should be looking into. A crash mat for all of your mental um, development on your higher tumbling skills and something softer to land on for all of those tricks and those handstand forward roll type drills. And then a block which is going to be your friend as you develop your higher level tumbling. Thank you, Sarah, for the amazing ideas. This episode was perfect for teachers who are just getting started, as well as studio owners who are deciding what types of mats to purchase as their acro classes continue to grow and develop. Thanks for listening, everyone, and have a great day.